questions. All right. Uh, appreciate everyone coming uh, this afternoon. This this uh, press conference is is about Demar Hamlin, um, whom we love. It's about his his parents, uh, Mario and Nina, and their extended family. Uh, we continue to pray for them during this time, uh, and Demar uh, is and, and remains our number one concern. Um, I'd like to thank a number of people. We'd like to thank a number of people. Uh, before we get into your questions, uh, as there have been so many people involved. Uh, in DeMar's situation, and uh, if we leave somebody out, uh, we apologize. Um, first, I'd like to thank the first responders uh, on the field this past Monday evening and the medical teams of the Bills, the Bengals, and the staff, doctors, and nurses um, at the University of Cincinnati Medical Center for their work uh, and their care. Terry Pagula, the Buffalo Bills staff, coaches, and players, as well as their families who have all been affected and impacted by this situation. Uh, the amount of faith, hope, and love that we saw on display over the last three days has been nothing short of amazing. Uh, I'd also like to thank the entire Bill, uh, excuse me, Bengals organization, uh, their ownership, and specifically Zach Taylor, his staff, uh, and their players and, and going above and beyond and handling the situation the way that they, that they did. Um, the officiating crew that was on the field, led by Sean Smith, uh, and the way that they handled that situation with extreme poise and compassion um, certainly helped um, in the minutes that um, that situation unfolded on the field in the minutes after as well. Uh, both Roger Goodell and Troy Vincent and their leadership from the league office, as well as the NFL Players Association and Don Davis. Uh, fans of both the Bills and the Bengals, along with the many other uh, fans and organizations that we've heard from uh, over the last three days. And then I'd also like to thank you, the media, uh, for your respect and, and privacy and compassion again over the last three days as we've dealt with this situation and going forward as well. Um, finally, and, and just as important as anything, is glory to God for, um, for his keeping DeMar and his family in the palm of his hand over the last couple of days and his healing powers. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to you. Sean, I'm listening to uh, the doctors today. Um, that we were able to talk to on that Zoom call, updating the progress he's made, particularly over the last 24 hours. How encouraging is that? And, and Josh, you can jump in here too. What's your reaction as you as you hear that? Yeah, very encouraging. Uh, we've been getting uh, incremental updates, um, and Brandon uh, and Nate, Brandon being uh, and Nate Bresky, Nate being our head trainer, uh, as well as to Bonnie, uh, Richard stayed behind uh, in Cincinnati at the hospital. They've been there the whole time. And um, so my hat goes off to them as well. And, and uh, uh, but they've been giving us updates, or uh, Demar's doctors have been giving uh, our doctors updates. Uh, Dr. Bissan here in town, and then the updates have flowed basically through either Brandon uh, and Nate, or Dr. Bissan, or directly from Demar's doctors. And uh, the news has been very encouraging, as as we all are up to date at this point, and uh, just extremely grateful about the leadership of your head coach when this happened, when DeMar collapsed and ultimately deciding this game should not be played? Yeah. Um, the way he handled it was he, he was a perfect man in that situation to handle that, that type of situation. I, I can't say enough about what he did, what he said to us in the locker room. Um, obviously just a, a a dire circumstance that nobody's expecting, nobody's ready for. There's nothing that you can train about doing. Like, you can never put yourself in that situation until it happens. Um, and I want to thank our, I know Coach mentioned it earlier, but our training staff for going out there, not knowing what's going on, but going through a checklist, working as a, a single cell symbiote, like saving his life. You know, and is being on that field, it, 
you, know, you, you, you lose sleep, you hurt for your brother, um, a lot of shared grief, but to the question before, getting updates and positive updates eases so much of that, that pain and that tension that you feel, but coach handled it as, as perfect as anybody could. Josh, can you take us through, you personally, but even your teammates as well, the level of fear that you were facing when you were, because it was clear you guys knew what was going on. Can you just share maybe some of the level of fear you guys had? Yeah. Um, I don't typically like using emotion to answer questions, uh, but yeah, like the the scene just replays over and over in your head, and there's again, it's hard to answer that question and actually describe how you know I felt, how my teammates felt in that moment. It's something we'll never forget, but to know that Demar is he's doing okay, and I know there's still a lot of a lot of things and and stuff that he has to process and continue to go through um, to get back to to himself. We're just, again, we heard that news this morning, and there's nothing that, that could have been told to us to bring our day down. You know, we're extremely happy for him and his family. Um, you know, we just want to we just want to love up on him, you know. So the next chance we get, I don't know when it's going to be, if we, if we get to see him anytime soon, man, it's going to be awesome. Alan, can you give the version, your version of the conversation you had with Zach Taylor where he said, uh, he quoted you as saying, you had to be with your guy at the hospital. If you could just, you know, pick it up from where yeah. you're at. You know, I caught a little bit of that and, and um, you know, just very appreciative of Zach. And I'll start there. I mean, Zach, the NFL is such a competitive league and, and, and games are so competitive. You spend all week, right, preparing to, to beat each other. And as fast, and Josh can attest to this, as that was unfolding in those situations, it's, as Josh alluded to, you never – you, you prepare for things to go wrong in the game as you visualize the game unfolding just so you're ready, but they're not of that nature, right? They're on the field, they're schematic challenges and whatnot. And, um, and so as competitive as this league is, um, Zach quickly uh, recognized the situation. And, and when you can engage with the opposing coach and he and, you, and, and Zach and I were on the same page so, so quickly, there, um, it was amazing that how how compassionate Zach was, and his players. Um, you know, his. I'm jumping ahead here, Vic, but the, their captains came down to our locker room and met with our team and, and captains, and um, just just an amazing um, show of of compassion, empathy, love, um, and it's it's just so amazing because minutes before that. You know they were, we were going at each other, and um, and so my hat goes off to Zach and, and the Bengals, as I've said before. But um, so it, it unfolded so quickly, um, and things have happened so quickly since that point in time, um, with balancing everything that we're we're balancing. Um, I really haven't thought back clearly about the step, you know, in the steps in order, but I do. You know, when Zach said that, I do recall it. I'd forgotten that, but it brought it back to my mind that um, I, I, after, after we, after Demar got loaded into the ambulance, um, I remember thinking to myself, "We're going to need some time." Um, we being the Bills, at least, and we're so conditioned to uh, a player is taken off the field who is injured um, to right to going right back into you know, that mode. And, um, and so um, I said to Sean Smith, I said, hey, we're going to need some, some time here. And again, he was, he was tremendous. And, um, and then I remember going back to our sideline, had a conversation with Leslie Frazier. And I can't even remember what Leslie said, uh, but he was a help as well. And, and then um, I went back to Sean and uh, and said, I don't feel, I don't feel good about this, and uh, or something to that effect. And then he, uh, he came back. Uh, he was going to go talk to Zach. Zach comes over. I think as Zach has recounted since that point in time. And then, um, and then the league was involved, and and so we went back to the 
and the league helped in this way as well, saying, hey, it's okay to go back in your locker rooms. Um, and so we headed that direction. And, uh, and then the time, the way things uh, unfolded from, from there was really we were in the front of our locker room, not quite out uh, in the hallway at that point, but uh, having conversations amongst ourselves. Um, I think I went in and addressed the team and just felt like overall it was going to be really hard to put them back out there but I wanted to give them the option to go back out there if they wanted to. And, um, and led by Josh and, the, and a couple of the other captains, they decided not to go back out there. And, um, and so going then <coughs> from our locker room out our doors to the hallway where Sean and the, the rest of the official, officiating crew, uh, as well as Donna Ponte from the league, they were there, you know, making sure that they were there for us and, and then and then Zach also walked down outside of our locker room. Um, and I'm not sure what was covered on television or not. So, um, And then, again, the follow-up conversation that needed to happen uh, ensued right there outside of our locker room. Sean, Sean, how do you go, and Troy Vincent talked eloquently yesterday about how you were battling and this team was battling and how the focus was on um, really just the mental health. How difficult was that part? How uplifting was the news this morning? And with Mario Hamlin speaking to the team, and how do you just turn your attention now moving forward to, 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 to try to play a game? Yeah, um, fair question. It's um, you know, mental health is real, and um, you know, I think as a coach and as uh, as leaders of organizations, um, you know. Um, Number one, Terry Pagula does a great job of, of leading in that regard for us. Um, and, but the job description of a coach is not just coaching X's and O's. And it's, it's um, much more than that. And so, um, you know, the health, to me, the health and, and well being of, of your staff and your players. Um, is the number one job of, of a coach in this situation. And so that includes mental health. Sean and Josh, can you follow up on that? Was there, I, uh, media has spoken about you uh, uh, admiringly about your approach to mental health this week. Can you talk about whether there was any formal, um, I guess I'm thinking like the equivalent of brief counseling or anything formal for the team or resources that were made available to them this week? Yes. Um, um, we we provided um, we have already in house um, staff that that is their um, main responsibility um, to not only the players but also the staff and then in this case we were able to add additional uh, counselors uh, when we when we arrived back here on uh, a Tuesday morning uh, we 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 weren't supposed to have a mandatory meeting or any function that day as a quote unquote players day off mandatory, but uh, we scheduled a 12 o'clock team meeting and um, um, had additional counselors on hand to, to help in that regard, um, generally to the overall team, but then in breakout sessions from there, if need be. Coach, what, have you, what have you seen from your team or what would you need to hear that will make you comfortable with playing the game at 1 p.m.? And, and Josh, after he's done, if you could follow up, just the idea of moving forward and playing for DeMar? Yeah, um, when we, when, when DeMar's father spoke to us, um, again, the days have, have blended together here. So today is Thursday. So yesterday, uh, DeMar's father spoke to the team and um, really his message was um, the team needs to get back to um, focusing on the goals that they had set for themselves. DeMar would have wanted it that way, and I'm paraphrasing. And so um, that includes our game against New England this week. And I think that that has helped. And, uh, and then again today, the news today, as Josh alluded to, uh, was, a, was a big, was a huge help uh, to getting us back to focused um, on, on the game this weekend. Yeah, and I'd say from a player's view, Hearing Mario talk to us, the words of encouragement that he had for us, um, 
and I had the chance actually to, to talk to him Monday night, and the only thing he said was, my son's going to be all right. Coach, uh, how, um, no other coach has experienced what you was a part of on uh, Monday night. Uh, how was it for you to keep your players level with their emotions while you dealt with your emotions at that moment? Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, what I did, and, and listen, this is not about me. This is about DeMar and his family, and that's why I, I started the way I did. Um, I really feel like I did what anybody else would have done. Um, and, and so when you're in those situations, you just react. And um, when you prepare for a game, the game can slow down because you've prepared for the game and you've visualized it ahead of time. In this case, I can tell you it was moving very slowly at the beginning, just as we were, as DeMar was on the field. Um, it was, time was just um, creeping by as we were trying to get a response to where, you know, how he was doing. And then um, from that point on, it moved very, very quickly in terms of us trying to get to a decision and do the right thing. And I think that's really what it really comes down to is just trying to do the right thing for everyone involved. Josh, Josh, Josh what do you expect Sunday to be like? you and for this entire team? A little difficult to answer that question. Um, I think for every person it's going to be a little different. I think putting that helmet back on today was a really good thing for our, our team and just to, to kind of go through that process. Um, but I'd be lying to you if I didn't say, you know, some people are going to be changed forever, you know, after being on the field. and. And witnessing that and, and feeling those emotions. Um, but again, the best way that we can continue to move forward, obviously, the updates that we keep getting on DeMar really lift our spirits, leaning on each other, um, talking to each other. You know, we've had some, some very open and honest and deep talks, some unbelievable, uh, it sounds weird, but embraces as men, just hugging somebody and actually leaning into them. There's been a lot of that going around, and you need every bit of it. You, you really do. And, Again, I think the fact that we just keep hearing good news about DeMar, it, it just keeps pushing us forward. You mentioned how Mario's words have helped you get move forward. Obviously, the word of him being awake and seems like he's going to be okay obviously gets you much closer to calm. Why do you have to play Sunday? <laughs> I'll, I'll say I'm not on the field playing, um, and I think there is a, a little bit of a different dimension when you're actually out there playing, uh, in particular because of what, what Josh was referring to. Um, I feel strongly um, that, as, as his dad, as, as Mario uh, mentioned to us, that this is what DeMar um, would have wanted and wants. And um, we owe that, and my, this is my opinion and my take on it, uh, we owe that to DeMar and we owe that to his family. This is what the NFL should want. Uh, I'm not going to comment on that. You uh, hear, um, you know, DeMar's remarks when he first was awake that we win the game. You know, how much, you know, would that drive you and the rest of the team going forward? Yeah. His dad said the first thing that he's going to ask when he wakes up is who won the game. <laughs> and sure enough, that's what he did, man. And uh, as teammates, you, you love hearing that response that the first thing on his mind wasn't, you know, poor me. It was, how are my teammates doing? Did we win this game? And that's powerful in itself, man. And I don't think people really understand the, the bond and the relationship and the brotherhood that you have as an NFL team, especially this one here. Guys love each other, and we really do. Um, and for, you know, obviously DeMar to go through that and to come out on the other side and still, again, just think about his teammates. That's, that's DeMar. That's who he is, though. Sean, how the university this team is, this team and community come? <clears throat> yeah. Just, just, do you wonder if it's a cruel thing? And you've over, overcome them. Yeah. How, how do you now overcome this one? Um, and you, do you wonder if the cruel fate of just, you know, playing games with you, and how do you overcome well, I'm a, I'm a Christian man to begin with, and I'm not afraid to say that. And um, I know that when you're trying to do um, do good things or great things, that sometimes you come across opposition. Um, I'll leave that part of it there. And how do I know that we'll be able to overcome 
um, is we have to, um, just like um, we've done many times before in this city and the people of Western New York that have dealt with what they've dealt with. Um, that's what you do. And um, I've never been around a, a city or a region like this that is so in sync team, uh, their teams and, and, and the fan base. And um, I mean that. And I know this is Josh's only team since he's been in the NFL, but I, I'm sure he would echo the same thing. And um, this is what Western New York and, and, and the fans of the Buffalo Bills, this is what we do. Josh, you can only speak for yourself. Um, you obviously are a leader on this team, but the images of you and a lot of your teammates after that happened, I mean, they're powerful. How do you personally feel impacted by what you saw moving forward playing football? Yeah. Um, just a lot of, lot of things going through the mind, obviously, on the field and didn't grasp, I guess, the reality of it until you, you start hearing things from the medical team. And again, the, the weight that has been lifted on myself and everybody else's shoulders, obviously, after hearing the updates. But I, uh, it, it's, it was tough. It, it is tough um, to know that this is a game that we play and we're able to you know, put all of our emotions and off the field stuff away. Lisa, that was a happy song. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, Sean, while I'm sure everyone's laughing at me, um, we've come to learn that, that Denny Killington was the person yeah. who delivered the CPI. Can you maybe share a thought about his performance, basically? Um, again, amazing. Um, you know, to give it context to some extent, Denny is um, one of our assistant trainers. Um, uh, Nate Bresky is our head trainer. And so um, just like anything else, that whole team, our medical team, they, they, go, th they go through their exercise, uh, mock exercises for things like this. But we uh, are never around to see that when they do that. And um, as they say, practice pays off, and, and it did in this case. But again, the context of it, for, for an assistant to find himself at that position and needing to take the action that he did and step up and take charge like he did, and there were others on the field as well, um, um, is nothing short of amazing. And the courage that that took, um, like that is, you talk about a, um, a real leader, a real hero, um, and saving DeMar's life and um, just uh, admire his strength. Sean, what does it been like to see the support throughout the country? What has it been like to see the support throughout the country? There's millions of dollars that have come in for DeMar's foundation. What has that been like to see, yeah. not just here in Western New York, but across the entire country? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not a big social media person. Uh, but Josh did, did share something with me uh, via text that he saw today, earlier today, and um, and I looked at it, and it was, uh, maybe you've seen it, it's about what maybe DeMar's mom is going to share with him when he, <clears throat> when he wakes up, and um, it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's amazing to to know the impact that this has had on um, so many of so many people, and for now, Demar to be awake and <clears throat> his mom to be able to share that with him is—it's incredible. Josh, what do you the think the moment is going to be like the when you're first able to talk? With tomorrow, I mean, obviously, just tell him how much we love him as a team. Um, it's a kid that walks around the facility that you never see in a bad mood. He's always upbeat. Just wants to go out there and play football. And yeah, it's it, we're looking forward to that. We're not really sure when when we're going to be able to see him. 
but there's I know there's some talks about trying to, whether it's next week or the week after, whatever whatever the case may be, we're we're chomping at the bit to get down there and see him. Sean, 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 how do you, you have the whole team you have to think about, but you also have individuals, obviously. They're all going to process it a little bit differently along the way, and there's going to be steps. How, how do you navigate through that? Because you have a message to the team, but you have to account for each individual, and you also have people on your staff who can help you do that as well, I'd imagine. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I think we opened up uh, Tuesday at that meeting with, with the uh, entire team that everyone's going to handle this um, in their own way and have respect for each other um, that in, in that regard that um, yeah, everyone's going to deal with it in their own in their own way so um, but having the counselors I've been able to have some dialogue and communication with some of the other NFL head coaches who have been through traumatic events obviously none you know not one is exactly like this um, but they've been great from Joe Gibbs to Mike Tomlin uh, Romeo Cornell, um, I know a couple of our coaches uh, have spoken with um, Marvin Lewis as well. So that, uh, albeit unfortunate, those situations that have come up have been um, good resources for us and uh, will continue to be. Sean, you talked about so the mental <laughs> health of the players and you've talked about the mental health of the staff. What about the mental health of Sean McDermott? How important is it for for you to also kind of make sure you take care yeah. of you. Um, again, this isn't about me. Um, I appreciate you asking, Josh. I'm um, I'm human, just like anybody else. And um, there's been moments, as as we just had, um, that are, that it it um, overwhelms you, and um, it's it's come up uh, more than a couple times for me at different points in time. Um, so, um, but like, like anybody else, um, I need to be able to have a, enough self-awareness to know when I need a break and when I need to um, seek out a counselor um, uh, as well. So that's, I don't think, I think it's important to know that that's not a sign of weakness. If anything, that's a sign of strength um, and people need to know that out there. Josh, as, Josh, as a follow up to the question so about the counseling that, you, that, that this team has gotten, you're, you know the inherent risks of this game, not only just you, but your teammates. How, how much in those discussions, because this is such an extraordinary thing that we all witnessed and the, and the terror that was on yours and teammates' faces, does it change anything about that idea of the risk of going back on that field, knowing something like this, which you probably never fathomed could happen? Yeah, and it's hard not to let it be you know, creep into your mind. Um, you know, we've been reassured this this is the freakiest of freak accidents, and it took the worst possible timing for this to happen. Um, but, again, the mental aspect of it, going out on that field, if you have that, that thought, you know, that's putting yourself at risk even more, putting your teammates at risk even more. And I know Coach is going to do a good job, and he's been doing a great job about making sure guys understand that and understand, you know, mentally, like you have to be bought in too. Um, but, you know, as, again, like as Coach alluded to, as humans, it's hard to not feel that way. And um, But just to know that, again, the track record of the league and, and obviously there's injuries and that's, that's part of the sport. And this is the worst possible case scenario you can ever think of. And, uh, again, we're just... We're just happy Demar's all right. Josh, since this has happened, a lot of people have wanted to know stories about Demar. What is he like as a teammate? And do you have any short stories that you can share? And what is he like to coach? And do you have any? Again, he's in the locker room. He is the happiest dude. You know, we play basketball. A uh, little knockout before walkthroughs on Saturdays. Uh, he's got a good shot on him. Um, <laughs> But the, again, I, I couldn't ever tell you a story of where he was upset and brought it into the building. You just never saw him down. He was always positive. Again, and I know he switched to number three and, and the power of three. This is the third day since Monday night happened. Um, and again, I'm a big believer in the prayer. You know, keep praying for him. 
um, being surrounded by a, a fantastic medical team. Again, our, our training staff responding the way, the way they did, it, I mean, it all had to be pretty perfect from what we were told for him to have a chance and to know that, you know, he's going to continue to get better. Um, we had to still keep praying for him and uh, we just got to get him back here. Sean, in the big picture, what would have been a big news story with the NFL canceling that game? How much does it matter to you or this team um, at all um, at this point to you? I see Josh is shaking his head. I mean, it, it is canceling. In, in the aftermath. How much does it matter that the, the NFL canceled that game? Because it just seems like it doesn't seem like much in the aftermath of what, what has happened. No. Um, I. It's it, it pales in comparison to what unfolded, and, and we're talking about human life, and that's I mean that's the most important thing. We talked in the locker room uh, after <coughs> um, after we went into the locker room, and I, we brought that up and said, you know, the ramifications could be X, um, knowing who was playing that night and what's with the seating and all that. Um, but it was overwhelmingly in favor of doing the right thing for DeMar and for the players in the locker room uh, on both sides, not just the Bills, but also the Bengals, and uh, felt strongly about that and still do. Sean, you've been really transparent about your feelings, Josh, you as well, and I feel like for the 40 minutes you've talked to us, we've seen you smile a little, we've seen tears, some questions have been difficult to reflect on, and we're just a few days away from an actual game. Do you truly believe in your hearts that the Buffalo Bills are ready to play a football game right now? Well, I'll start. Um, I do. Yeah, I, I do as well. I mean, the news we, we, we received today in particular was, was a huge lift. Um, and again, I, I, I'm, I respect <laughs> these guys are the ones on the field playing. I'm standing on the sideline, Dana, so it's, it's, it's different for me. There's an added dimension for them on the field. So um, I'll just yield to Josh, and you can explain. Yeah. But. Again, Mario talking to us as a team and the things that he, he kind of told us and really didn't tell us. He demanded us. You know, and you, you can't not honor his, his request to go out there and charge forward, you know, to the best of our abilities. And obviously we'll be playing with – I guess less heavy hearts now, um, knowing that you know today's news was a lot of a lot of tears of joy. I'll tell you that. Um, but to know that that's that's what he wants. That's what his dad wants. I think guys are uh, excited to get out there. Josh, you've been here for several years. You've experienced many live atmospheres with the fans. Just based on their support that they've shown via social media and otherwise, what do you expect the atmosphere to be like if you do indeed take the field on Sunday? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of three jerseys, three signs. Um, you know, it'll, it'll be, I'm sure it'll be a little surreal uh, to be obviously at home last week of the season. Um, yeah, we're, Obviously, there's some stuff that we need to still talk about as a team and get through, but uh, going to have a good good week of practice. And the last couple of days have obviously been tough, but they've been better, and we just got to keep moving forward. Coach, any question to you, just what do you expect the environment to be like? Yeah, I mean, um, knowing our fan base and, and, and the connection that we have and that they have with us, um, A, I think it's going to be very emotional for – everyone in the stadium, um, and B, I think it's going to be unlike anything I've ever seen before. Um, and we're going to have to balance some of that, you know, in order to perform the way we need to perform. Um, but um, we've spent a, a, a number of games this season away, um, kind of ironically enough, and um, this, is, this is going to be really good timing if there is good timing in any of this for us to be home finally and uh, in front of our fans. Josh, Josh you've you talked a, a lot about how close this team is, and we see it all the time. But what has this week been like in terms of guys being there for each other? Like, how have you seen your teammates or, or maybe something you've done to be there for a guy? Like, what has that looked like between you and your teammates this week? Yeah, I mean, 
again, I think everybody handles, you know, tough situations differently. Um, some guys need to be alone. Some guys need to be loved up on. Um, some guys just need to be around people, and, and some guys need to talk about it. And there's so many different ways that I saw that happening, whether it was in the locker room. Um, I opened my home and had, had guys over. I just sent out, hey, anybody come over. We're going to pray. Um, we're going to decompress a little bit. Um, and that, that, was, that was good to get guys back. And for the first time in a few days, some guys actually smiled a little bit and like knew obviously we were getting updates and, and trust in what we were being told um, by the doctors and, and Nate and Bean. Um, but just a, a good chance for guys to, to be around each other and again, just having some worship um, for DeMar and, and his family. Josh, it's been emotional. You know, you could have been tragic, right? Have you personally or the team collectively you know, thought about now this will inspire you and not just week 18 and beyond? I mean, uh, yeah. We, we've talked about it, obviously. Like, we want to we wanna go out there and play for three and um, – It'll be a, a huge driving force and, and the emotion and, and the love of the game that we play um, with and for each other. Um, hopefully we can get them back soon. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I also I, I do want to say one more thing. Um, and I, I do I haven't reached out to, to T. I hope that, you know, he got some relief today and I don't know. I, I saw some stuff on Twitter and um, People should not be attacking him whatsoever, and I'm glad that Demar's family came out and said that. And I hopefully he found some some relief today because again, that's that's a football play, um, and I hope that he doesn't hold that upon himself because again, there's nothing else that he could have done in that situation. So uh, I just wanted to say that too.